so with array lists. Um, connecting this back to last semester, we ran into a big limitation when it came to arrays. The big limitation we ran into was the size of the array is immutable, meaning we can't add elements to an array after we make one, and we can't remove an element from an array. If we make an array of 10 turtles, we're stuck with an array of 10 turtles. If we want to add an 11th turtle, um, and we ran into this with like one of our algorithms, we have to create a whole new array that can hold 11 elements, copy the first 10 over, and then add the 11th turtle. And that's really tedious. Um, we could try to be smart about it. We could be like, hey, if we need to add an 11th turtle, let's make a new array that can hold 20 turtles. So we have some extra free spots. And we'll just keep track of which elements are actual references to turtles and which are null because uh, are just not used yet. And that way we don't have to keep copying stuff. Um, we are not the only people in the world that ran into this limitation of arrays. Everyone runs into this limitation of arrays. And so the Java standard library has a class that implements all of this logic so we don't have to, um, which is really nice. And it's called in the array list class. So today we're gonna start exploring the array list class. Um, it's one of the classes on your APCSA quick reference. Um, there are six methods, one, two, three, four, five, six. There's six methods that we'll be using um, and we'll focus on like four of them today. Um, and an array list is basically inside of the array list object, there's still an array, okay? It's, think of it as extra code on top of the array to make our lives easier, to make it easier to add and remove elements. But there's still an array inside. An array list is still what we call an ordered collection, meaning if we have 10 elements, there is an element that's first and there's an element that's last. There's an element at index zero and index one and index two and index nine, um, just like there is with an array. All right, so let's look at a little bit of the syntax for declaring an array because it's a little bit different. We're gonna see a new concept here and a new part of the syntax here. When I specify that um, a variable that will refer to an array list object, the type is array list. But we can't just say we want an array list, just like we can't just say we want an array. We have an array list of strings, or an array list of turtles, or an array list of rectangles, or an array list of integers. We have an array list of something, and we need to specify the type of the element in the list. And the syntax for doing that is a little weird. We use angle brackets, the less than or greater than symbol. And inside those angle brackets, we specify the type of the element. So for example, like capital I, integer. So here's how we would declare a new variable, my list, that will refer to, at some point, an array list of integers. This new syntax of the angle brackets um, isn't unique to array lists. There are other classes in Java that also use these angle brackets. Um, and what these are called are generics. So the array list is a Java generic. So whenever we have some sort of, let's say like a collection that has elements or a class that operates on, on um, other objects of certain types, it might be a generic where we have like an array list of turtles, array list of strings, and array list of integers. Oh, that's such a good question. Okay, so why can't we say this? Well, um, because generics, the angle bracket thing, only supports class types. So let's actually add that to our notes as well. Um, so we can say we have to specify the class type of the elements in the list in angle brackets. Again, that's the greater than less than symbol thing. 
after every array list identifier. So it can be a little tedious. Identifier. Every time you type array list, you have to, in the angle brackets, specify the type of the elements. So basically, just treat this whole thing as like the class name. Okay. Technically, there are times when you can leave out the type inside of the angle brackets, um, but when that is and isn't permitted, beyond the scope of the course, we're not going to worry about that. We're just always going to specify the type of the elements. Um, so because it says class type here, that means primitives. So again, remember primitives are things like int, double, boolean. Primitive types are not class types. The primitives are not classes and cannot be specified as the type of the element. And that's not unique to ArrayList, that's true of all Java generics. So obviously this is a problem because like, well, what if I do want an ArrayList of ints, right? Like that's probably pretty common. Um, and so when they wrote, the, when they added support for generics, they also added classes that correspond with every primitive type. So there is a capital I integer class. So what we do instead is we can use the corresponding what are called wrapper classes. So there is a capital I integer class, there's a capital D double class, there's a capital B Boolean class, so on and so forth. So if we truly want an array list of ints, well, we have to have an array list of capital I integer instead. Generics did not always exist in Java. So in versions of Java before Java 5, there were no generics. And so we just had an array list. And then every time we wanted to deal with an element from a, an array list, we'd have to cast it using that cast operator to the, to the appropriate type. Um, that was really tedious, led to a lot of bugs because it was really error prone. So generics is definitely like a great feature that makes our code much, much better. Yeah, anyone can use them. So you can write your own classes that are generics for sure. Absolutely. We, we do that in software engineering. All right, so that's how we declare an array list, but let's actually learn about some of the, let's learn about like, how do we make a new array list? So let's scroll down a little bit. There's already a Java doc comment written for us um, that documents the method we're about to implement, which is create random integer list. We had a very similar method to this that we used with arrays, but this is our array list version. So it's going to create and return a reference to an array list of the specified number of integer elements where each element is assigned a random number between one and range inclusive. So the first thing we need to do before we can start interacting with a list is to actually make a new array list object. And so we're going to create a local variable of type array list. And again, we have to have the angle brackets. And we're going to have an array list of integers, so capital I integer list equals, I want a new array list. And again, I got to do capital I integer. So even though the syntax is a little weird with the whole angle bracket thing for the generic, the good news is creating a new array list is just like creating a new object of any other class type. This line of code is the same as saying turtle crush equals new turtle, except now it says array list of integers list equals new array list of integers. We still have the open and close parentheses. We still have the semicolon. There's nothing in the parentheses because we don't need to pass any arguments to the constructor, um, but they're still there just like they are with every other class. So there's a lot of weird syntax with arrays, right? There's all that, um, Array lists are much more standard, especially if we just think about all of this is just the name of the class, not so bad. All right, well, let's, um, let's, so when we make a new array list, we have a new array list object and it starts out empty. 
meaning there are no elements in our list. Um, but the cool thing about an array list is we can add elements to it. So let's do that. So we'll create a for loop for i equals zero, i is less than size, i plus plus. So this loop will run size number of times. We need to generate a random number between one and range inclusive. So I'll create a local variable called value of type int for that. This is that code snippet that shows up on every AP exam I can think of. Math.random times max minus min plus one, which in this case would just be range. Take that product, cast it to an int, add the minimum value, which is one. That gives us our random value. Um, and now we get to add it to the list. Every time we interact with an array list object, we have to do it using the array list methods. And again, all the ones we need are right on our APCSA quick reference. So the first method we're going to see is the add method. We'll say list.add and we'll pass the value. So the add method adds the specified object to the end of the list. So whenever we invoke the add method and we pass a new, ob a new reference to a new object, it adds it to the end of the list. And what's cool about the array list class is if we don't have room in the array for that, it handles growing it and copying stuff and fixing everything up for us. It's wonderful. Something that may seem odd with this code though, is that we made a new array list where each element is supposed to be of capital I integer, but value is not. Value is of type int. It's a primitive, okay? Um, we, we could write code like this, new capital I integer, and then initialize it with value. That works, that compiles. This would be really tedious. And so when they added generics and they added these wrapper classes, um, the developers of Java realized, let's make this easier on developers. Let's add a feature that automates this for them. So let's capture that idea. It's called auto boxing. Auto boxing is when primitive values, like this variable value here, are automatically converted converted to their corresponding wrapper class. So because value is of type int, Java will look at this and be like, oh, I see. I will automatically make a new capital I integer object and I'll initialize it with the value of the variable value. Um, or if we have an array list of capital D doubles and we try to pass 7.4, Java will be like, oh, I'm gonna automatically create a new capital D double object and initialize it with a value 7.4. So we don't have to do that. Super, super convenient. There are limits though. So however, type promotion does not occur. So for example, if we have an array list of capital D doubles, and we try to add a variable of type int, it's too many steps for Java to be like, oh, I'm gonna take the int and promote it to a double, and then I'm gonna convert the double primitive to a capital D double object. Like, it's not gonna do that. So I just wanna point that out. So like, if it doesn't work for you, maybe you're just trying to do too many steps at once. Like a capital I integer? No, because they're different types. So you'd have to make sure to get it as a capital D double first. Yeah. Right. 
But in general, like that doesn't really pop up much because usually if like we have an array list of capital D doubles, our primitive types are all of type double two. So usually it just works out. All right, so let's actually return list here. I had null before just so it would compile, but let's return list. Question? Oh, great question. So the question was, these are, wow, it's really loud. So the question was, hey, why would we ever use an array again? Right, like this array list looks pretty nice. Um, we're gonna see there are limitations of an array list. And actually this is one of them, like the primitive type thing. Um, but we're gonna see there's some others too. And so there's trade-offs to be made. We'll get to that in a couple of days once we have a little more experience with array list. That's a really good question. Yes. What type? Um, potentially, depending on what you're doing, yeah, it could. It may or may not matter, but there's that potential. Yep. Um, so back in the main method, let's actually call. Let's assign to our variable my list what the reference to the array list that's returned from create random integer list. And then let's print it out. So let's compile this and run this so we can actually see what's printed to the terminal. There we go. And this is kind of cool. So you, you may not remember, but when we first printed a variable that was like an array of ints last semester, all that was printed was the reference. It wasn't very useful. We had to write our own code to actually enumerate through the array and print every element. The array list does it for us, which is great. So it implements the two string method um, that nicely formats and prints out the values of all the elements in the array. So that's cool. All right, let's take a look at a few more methods on the ArrayList class. And we're gonna do that in the context of the next static method here, which is called remove evens. So it takes one parameter, which is a reference to an ArrayList. It's gonna iterate through that ArrayList. And if the value of the element is even, it's gonna remove it from the list. This is one of the other cool features of an ArrayList. We can actually remove elements. So let's create a local variable called size. And we're gonna invoke the size method, oops, size method on the list. So here's our second method on the array list class. The size method returns the number of elements in the list. So when we make a new array list, size will return zero. We don't have any elements yet. All right, so we wanna iterate through the list. We wanna look at every element. So we can write a standard for loop for that. For int i equals zero. i is less than size, i plus plus. And then we want to be able to, so as I said earlier, every element in an array list resides at a particular index. So i is the variable we can use as our index variable, just like we did with arrays. So we can have a local variable here, value. And if we want to get the value of an element at a specified index, we do that with the get method. So, the get method returns the value of the element 
at the specified index. So if i has the value of zero, we get the element at index zero, that's the first element in the list, so on and so forth. I really want to point out that when it comes to array lists, we have to use methods. The only way to interact with an array list is by calling methods like size and get. Okay? We cannot use square brackets with array lists. Um, and, and that's actually one of the limitations of an array list. The square bracket syntax, yeah, it's odd, but boy, it's super convenient with arrays. Um, and we can't use square brackets with array lists at all. I don't fully appreciate why, but this is something that many students really, really struggle with. Um, they really just want to use square brackets with array lists, um, which isn't so much a problem when you're typing in BlueJ because it's not going to compile and you're going to be like, oh yeah, I got to call get and you're going to fix your code. It becomes a really big problem on free response questions. And for some reason, the college board, in terms of their scoring rubrics for the AP exam, have decided that they really care if you can distinguish array lists from arrays. And if you use the wrong syntax, they take off an extra point. I don't think they're mean people, but boy, that seems really harsh. Um, so this is something like I'll keep reminding you of, but basically the best advice I got to, that I have to share with you until I think of something better is whenever you're writing out code, you just have to stop and be like, wait, is this an array or is this an array list? And what syntax do I use? Um, it's something that we'll, we'll definitely struggle with for a while. All right, so now that we have the value, we can check if it's even. A good way to do that is use the mod operator. If value mod two equals zero, that is if we divide value by two and the remainder is zero, then it's even. And if it's even, we want to remove it from the list. And the way we remove an element is we call the remove method. And the remove method deletes the element at the specified index. Perfect. So three new methods here on the ArrayList class. Size returns the number of elements. Get takes the index and returns the value of that element. Remove takes an index and removes that element. So we're going to compile this. Oh, wait, not yet. We got to actually call this method or else it's not very useful. So let's scroll back up to the main method. Let's invoke this static method remove evens. And we'll pass my list as the argument. So that's the list that we'll remove the evens from. And then we'll print it again. So we can visually inspect, oh, here's the list of what it looked like before. Here's the list of what it looks like after. Did it work? Did it remove all the even values from the list? So if I compile and run this, it crashes. I get an index out of bounds exception. You will also get an index out of bounds exception. Yours might be slightly different, but mine says index seven out of bounds for length six. Yours might say index five out of bounds for length five. I don't know. Um, but clearly I have one or more bugs in my code. So what I'd like you and your new fair programming partner to do is first of all, introduce yourselves because many of you are in eighth hour, but not all of you. And then I want you to find and fix my code and all the bugs in it until this method works as expected. So not only should it just not crash with an exception, it should actually remove all the even elements to run it several times, make sure it works. But I'm gonna give you five minutes to fix my code and then we're gonna get back together. Give an index out of bounds exception. What's one reason? Every time you delete from the array, you have to use your size mode to make your size array cooler. So eventually, unless you know how to notify, you need to add an asterisk to the value. 
more. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So when I, if we have 10 turtles well, and I remove one, well, there's now there's only nine turtles in the list, right? So at some point, because the value of this variable size doesn't change, I is going to refer to an index that isn't valid. It's out of bounds. So some of you fixed it like this, size minus minus, right? If you remove an element, decrement the size. That totally works. The way that we usually address this, however, is we actually invoke the size method right here in the condition. This is how you'll normally see a traditional for loop written for an array list. We'll say while well, i is less than list.size. That way if the size of the list changes, our loop adjusts as it goes. Absolutely, yeah. So let's run this code. Ooh, it almost works. It removed this 10, it removed this 12, it removed this 18, but it didn't remove that 10. And if I run it again, here it removed the 16, but not the eight. It removed this six, it removed this 14, but not the 20. So it seems to what? Yeah, it's a, it's missing the even after the first even. What are you saying? Ah, all right. Let me restate that. So, like, just to make sure everyone heard, this is really really important. When we remove, let's say we're going to remove the sixteen because it's even. Sixteen is at index zero. When we remove this 16, we can't just have like an empty hole in an array list. It's still an array. We got to put something there. So all the subsequent elements shift one index lower or to the left if we write an array list like this. So the 8 moves to index 0, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that except my code immediately when we get to the next loop increments i. So i is going to go from 0 to 1, and we're never going to look at that duplicate even. We could fix that just by saying i minus minus. Basically, decrement i by 1, because we're about to increment it, and we want it to stay the same. And if we run this, Let's see, 14 got removed and 18 got removed. This is a good sign. Twenty, ten, and four all got removed. Good, this looks promising. 